Good afternoon, YouTube. This video review is for Perdomo 20th anniversary. Now, before I get started with the actual cigar itself, I want to bring up a few points just to educate the cigar smoker. Now, this portion here, which you're going to light up, is known as the foot. This middle portion here is known as the body, and this section here is known as the head, which you're actually going to pull from. This cigar is a Maduro wrapper. It's dark and an oily leaf. As you can see, it's a 20th anniversary. Now, this is known as a V-cut because it's shaped like a V. This is known as a box press cigar. You can see that it's sort of shaped like a box, box pressed. Okay, now, normally you should have some items with you in your bag. You can go to a, a simple cigar store and they'll give you a bag like this and you can store your cigars in it if you don't have a humidor at home. They'll give you a Bavita pack, which supplies some humidity into the bag, which keeps the cigar moist and smokable. These traditional matches are not good for lighting a cigar because they contain some type of a flammable chemical, which is coated on this. And the cardboard is very cheap. That's part of the matchsticks. This kind of gas and fumes can get into the cigar and change the taste. And they can also give you headaches and possibly give you a smoking sickness. Uh, this is a stick of cedar. This is normally found in the cigar box. So if you go to a cigar store or cigar lounge, the boxes that the cigars come in are usually lined with cedar. So they'll take them out and cut it into strips like this. You can smell it. You can light light it and then light the cigar to further infuse the cedar in it or to offset the matches uh, gas type of order. I suggest you also keep a gum, scented gum. This this tastes like jasmine. I like this. I think it's classy. It cost me a dollar twenty five or so. It's like little chiclets, uh, some mint. Get yourself a cutter. This one, San Lotano. It also has a backstop, as you can see, which prevents you from cutting too much off your cigar, and only just a little bit, which basically, if you even could use your fingernail, you could remove the end. That's known as the cap. And what happens here is, with this cutter, it prevents it from cutting too much, because what will happen is, if you cut a lot off your cigar, it'll unwrap the wrapper. So this outside is the wrapper and below the wrapper is known as the binder and the tobacco itself on the inside is known as the filler now these premium cigars which are hand rolled and are not cheap have a higher quality filler than the average cigar out there uh, that type of cigar would usually have what's left over uh, from the fillers uh, waste filler things like this or what you might find in your average cigarette this is probably about the best kind of uh, matches that you could use. Uh, they're wooden. They do also have some type of flammable chemical. So when you light this, you may want to give a few seconds before you actually light your cigar to allow the chemical to burn off. Also, tobacco has been around for a long time. There is forms of chewing tobacco. There are forms of chewing tobacco. This is Indian. It's called Tulsi Royal. They, they add betel nut and menthol to it. It's sort of minty. You may choose to chew this after your cigar, perhaps. Uh, what I like to do before I get started with any of this is I take a cold draw. So if I know that the cold draw is good, what happens is in the beginning, there are notes for, for the cold draw. So you may light the cigar, start smoking it at first, and it's still cold. So you're going to get some cold notes. You're not going to get all the notes or flavors out of the cigar yet until it starts to warm up. Do not remove 
anything from here because it has a special glue and basically this keeps the cigar intact so as it progressively burns up when you get towards this end you may remove this but if you remove it too early it can cause the cigar to unwind and you would basically destroy the cigar that you've spent so much money on uh, do not bite this off this isn't like in the movies where you think you, just bite, you, will, you will basically destroy the construction of the cigar the cigar also structurally has to be maintained like this so it's important to keep it in the plastic do not actually remove your cigars from the original plastic because the plastic provides protection and also provides some type of compression so that everything stays intact now if you begin to smoke this and as you notice as, as it warms up it will structurally begin to change it will get softer air has passed through in and out of it because not only can the air come through this but it can also go out of it. So if you attempted to blow out, you could actually blow out through the cigar. If you blow too hard, you could destroy the cigar. And the draws are to be taking their time. You're here to enjoy the cigar. This isn't supposed to be rushed. A uh, cigar typically could take between a half hour to an hour and a half to smoke. You are expected to possibly burn out at least one time. If you don't uh, continue puffing on this, it will burn out. And then you'll have to relight it. Constantly relighting the cigar will change the flavor. It'll offset it and it'll make it taste really bad. You'll get uh, burnt flavoring um, because the tobacco is being overcooked. And in this case, uh, it is preferable to light only once. Uh, Nick Perdomo, his great grandfather, came from Italy. And um, I believe he emigrated to Florida. And I believe that Nick Perdomo's tradition. Uh, was followed after Cuban uh, teachings of making cigars. I've actually met Nick Perdomo and I've actually taken a photo with Nick Perdomo and his family. Uh, I particularly like the 20th anniversary line. There is also a sun-grown uh, line that they have that's very good. Um, this cigar is well aged. You should be able to smell the cigar. It should smell pungent. It should be strong. And you shouldn't have any sort of mold on this cigar at all. There shouldn't be any white or green dots at all. Your cigar should be good. It should be pretty uniform throughout. Uh, if there's any punctures in the cigar, any sort of mold, the humidity is either too high, uh, the cigars may have gotten exposed to moisture or water, or any type of foreign substance, which is, an, again, why you want to keep the plastic on it. In your home humidor, if you choose to purchase one, make sure it's Spanish cedar lined. Uh, make sure it's of high quality because the cheaper humidors will not hold the humidity properly or they may leak out air uh, or they may draw in something from the ambient, which is the outside, into the cigars, which will make everything basically just rot. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I want to show you this. I'm going to not light the cedar this time, but I'm going to actually just light this, and we're going to get started here. More importantly, before I light this, when, when actually cutting one of these, you want to take this in your dominant hand, and you want to put it up against the non-dominant hand, and you want to make a firm, clean cut. Having to cut the cigar twice is going to ruin it. So you want to make sure that you cut once. And the measurements that they describe on the cigar, for instance, this one does not have the measurements written on it, but it should say handcrafted or hand rolled. This one does say handcrafted. It should be authentic. And the, for example, a five and a half this may be a five and a half uh, by 56 so the five and a half is the length and the larger number is the ring gauge so if you think about it ring ring gauge ring gauge so the the larger number if you get to 60 70 that's even a larger ring gauge and sometimes they make even new cutters to try to cut 
the ends of them because their ring gauges are so big. Uh, I also believe the future of cigars is going to be big ring gauges because they look better, they burn cooler, they do burn a little longer, uh, they do look better in some sense. I think they got that idea from the movies, but they lack flavor in a sense. The thinner cigars, such as a uh, Lanchero, uh, they taste better. Uh, there's there's more work involved, and there's a lot less filler. the f The flavor in reality is really actually in the wrapper. I would want to make sure that the the flavoring is really all in the wrapper. You're going to taste this. Your tongue is going to get on it. It's going to be the first thing that's going to go on in your mouth. A uh, portion of digestion is going to happen. You are going to get some nicotine in this, and you are going to get some, some other things that are going to happen in your mouth from smoking this, and it's just going to change flavor over time. Uh, also, depending on what you've eaten for the day, if you take any medication, if perhaps you have a cold, uh, any sort of change of uh, senses, um, it will offset your ability to taste the cigar. So what I taste may not necessarily be what you taste. I may taste something different depending on if I've eaten something spicy, sweet. Uh, also, the drink of choice, sometimes with these kinds of things, uh, usually our espresso, double espresso cappuccino, a lot of people pair it with whiskey, uh, some type of a spirit. Some people drink beers. I wouldn't recommend it uh, because I believe that anything that's carbonated, such as a club soda, even though some people do use seltzer or club soda when they uh, smoke a cigar, uh, anything that's that's gas-related or, or carbonated in any manner is going to upset the stomach and, and may may uh, cause you to have like a, I want to say like a heartburn. It's, it's going to make it worse. It's not going to give you a good smoking experience. This really should be smoked on a full stomach uh, to offset for any type of smoking illness or smoking sickness. I highly recommend you only smoke one, uh, and that goes for cigars in general. Uh, one, one a day, uh, preferably uh, after a meal, and to remain properly hydrated through the smoking session. So if you're going to drink a coffee, I suggest you also drink water. Uh, coffee in itself is a diuretic, and this in itself is going to also speed you up a bit. Uh, it's going to dehydrate you in a sense, and it's also going to make your skin a little tighter. Uh, I think likely because the the fact that you are dehydrating out, your skin is going to get a little tighter from this. So it may temporarily make you look like you've aged, and your teeth may uh, begin to show a little bit of a yellow shade uh, from from this. So there is an advisory. But there's a lot of fun to it. It is certainly a grown man thing. And there's games to play. Uh, you know, you could play some backgammon, checkers, chess, uh, smoke cigar. It spends some time to talk to people. You never know who you're going to meet in a cigar lounge. Uh, generally, there's professionals, doctors, Lawyers come there, people that just want to hang out. Uh, it's a great place to make new friends. Um, but for the most part, people inside of a lounge want to relax. Uh, a lot of times it's not a social setting altogether because some people just don't want to talk. And I think anyone who picks up this habit knows how to relax and basically respects the quality of the cigar. It's a craft in itself. Also, it's a tradition. It's certainly an American thing. And God bless the women that work in these factories uh, who make these things and the people overseas who help put this kind of idea together. And we buy them and they work hard to make these things so we can buy them. Also, It's uh, imperative that you dress properly in a cigar lounge. And I'm not saying you need a suit and tie, but some places do. But it, it is a, a good idea to properly dress yourself. And 
you're going to want to limit the amount of time you spend in a cigar lounge I think to maybe an hour and a half you may be inhaling a lot of smoke from other people uh, there may be music and is it's gonna change the environment uh, which could lead to more uh, smoking sickness uh, or what they want to call nicotine poisoning so that's just an advisory so let's get started and we'll go ahead and light this but just like a boss huh You want to make sure you get all this lit, and you should. Um, you could keep a cup with some water in it. It'll help prevent this from happening. See that? And you should get a full light out of this. It should be completely red if you did it properly. I'm getting a lot of cocoa out of it right away. I'm getting a lot of coffee. Sometimes bits of the tobacco can come loose from the cut and go into your mouth and cause an issue. I suggest that you do this with a window open if you're doing this at home. Uh, preferably it is the best idea to smoke outside. Uh, this can leave quite a bit of uh, smoke odor in your room. It'll be hard to get out. It's a lot stronger than uh, cigarettes and anything else that you smoke. See? Alright, so that's all you need to do. I'm getting a lot of cocoa. Uh, also, some of the notes that I researched on this were cedar, uh, nutmeg, there's uh, a lot of uh, fresh baked bread uh, notes in this cigar. So the cigar is, is pretty well rounded and I particularly like it. I think it is a good cigar, and uh, I highly recommend that people go out and buy the cigar. It should cost you roughly twelve to fifteen dollars uh, U.S. and it's it, it it'll take a uh, thirty minutes to smoke through. High quality. You get the aroma. Take another puff. It's nice and easy. That's all. We don't have to make large clouds right now until it begins to warm up and it should be fully lit and then you're good to go I appreciate this video if you like it kindly like and subscribe and I'll be doing another one soon thank you